All right, so we're going to watch La Noria because several of you were having problems with it, uh, especially the last question. I'm going to try to go through the whole movie. It may take a couple of videos to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we start on the music box and we pan up to the picture of the Ferris wheel. <coughs> uh, if you looked up La Noria, it means ferris wheel and then we meet our main character uh, who is drawing you can see a small soldier in the background uh, some bits and pieces to a kit and then we get to meet the teddy bear and he gets a soldier's hat and then the ferris wheel is unveiled And as he's picking up the pieces, we're seeing these drawings that he's been working on of uh, some disturbing looking monsters, who obviously will show up later in the film. If you look at the contents of the box, right, it's gonna shift focus in just a second. And there's the father, obviously in the military with the hat and the gun. <clears throat> and the rain, of course, is mimicking his tears. And then we notice the gear going on in the middle it has a crack in it. Right? Obviously the middle or the core or the heart of the machine is broken. And we get some more pictures. At this point you can tell uh, that the toy was a gift. Those pictures I'll show up again in just a minute. <coughs> gear rolls under the bed. You'll notice the camera shifts at this point to under the bed, right, looking out at him, right, as if there's somebody under there, the point of view of something under the bed. And then you see his bare feet, which also is a sign of, of vulnerability. We'll get to look at the pictures here again. If you look closely, there you go, they zoom in. You can tell there's a Christmas tree in the background. Uh, it's a new toy in a box. And now the pictures are gone. So that's our indication that something unusual is going on. And then we pan to the monster in the corner. <laughs> Sorry, I was interrupted by my son who freaked me out. So we get the Christmas lights now, which you would be thinking, why are there Christmas lights just hanging out in the house? Another indication that the gift was uh, from Christmas. <clears throat> we have another monster. And at this point, it seems as if the monsters are just destroying the house. Um, I'm not sure if there's much symbolism in the twinning of those, the kind of Siamese twin effect that they have going there. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pause here in just a second because my time is running out. Uh, as he heads up the stairs, okay, and then we'll pick this up on uh, another recording. Okay, so the monsters continue, quote unquote, destroying the house, uh, and they chase him to the top of the stairs, 
and we see all the stuff uh, that's been being taken and a new monster and a phonograph. He raises up and you can clearly see that he does not have a heart. And so he gets chased up another flight of stairs to a locked door to stuff that's being hidden away. <clears throat> you can actually look at this whole house, at least here in the dreams at night, right, as being a symbol of his mental state. So now he's gone into the locked room of his mind. Okay, and the monsters, some of whom are already there, some of them breaking in, still taking pieces of the house. I'm going to start, we have the mirror, okay, I'm going to start getting a spin here, mirror, monster, him, monster, him, monster, him, okay, and then breaking the mirror. Um, that should be the first indication that the monsters are actually the kid, or at least part of the kid. Okay, we'll get that same circular motion here. Uh, in a little bit. And you can see the photographs again in some of his drawings. And now that gear that was lost under the bed rolls back and if you look closely you can see that it was repaired. Right? That it's been stitched together uh, with some wire and a, and a staple, kind of. So it's not whole, it's not perfect, right? uh, and it's always going to have that scar on it, uh, but the heart of the machine, the heart of the boy has been repaired. And now we're seeing the monsters in a more uh, benevolent way. And you saw that little flash of light for the heart, right? but the monsters aren't nearly as scary now. And again, the vulnerable feet taking those steps forward as the monsters take a step back. And it's almost as if they're honoring him now, as if he, like he was the king or something walking through uh, his people. And you can see that this monster has been repaired a lot like the gear has been repaired. And then the boy will clutch his heart, again showing the parallel between the monsters and him. And then they unveil the Ferris wheel, just like he unveiled the Ferris wheel in the opening scenes of the movie, except this time it's now made out of all the pieces from the house, all right, or all the pieces of him uh, put together uh, to make this whole machine. <laughs> and you can still see that his reflection is fractured. He's not whole. Until he puts that gear in, okay, then all of a sudden the machine transforms. It becomes lit, full of life. We see the pictures of the, the father and the son putting the toy together. Yeah, we're going to get to the part here in just a second that's been confusing you as far as the questions I asked on the quiz. So he starts the machine. There's the music box handle, and it starts to get a life of its own. So the machine comes to life. You see the picture spinning, and we go to his reflection, which is just a bunch of pictures until the machine's going fast enough that it creates the illusion that he is whole. And we know for a fact that that reflection isn't whole, but our minds see it as complete, just like we see this movie as 
a moving picture and not just a series of still photos, which is actually what it is. Okay, so that's, it's like animation. <clears throat> okay, and now we're going to get the second time is a series of still photos, okay, which have turned into, you know, a kind of a, a stuttering uh, motion, okay, uh, to complete his memory. All right, so again, his memories himself completely created out of pieces, all right, or images, all right, that when viewed quickly uh, become the whole. And that's the end of the film. Hey, okay, the main character has become whole. Uh, or at least accepted the parts of him that he was denying the monsters that he had locked away. Um, but this is very uh, a very internal movie. All right? uh, they've externalized with the monsters and such, but clearly uh, the struggle, the conflict, is a boy struggling with the loss of his father. And we have that, that image of them sitting together on the Ferris wheel there at the end um, to let you know uh, that he is, you know, as healed as he's going to be. Okay, thanks. If you guys have more questions, feel free to email me.